You're watching the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series with our focus today on the Enterprise Edge. Enterprise workloads are being pushed to the edge, driven by latency, bandwidth, security and connectivity, as well as by the need to process data locally. Service providers and the ecosystem are innovating and building infrastructures to enable edge computing at the optimal location for enterprises. Well, joining me now to discuss the Intelligent Enterprise Edge is Bob Gaffari, General Manager, Enterprise and Cloud Networking Division, Network Platforms Group at Intel. Hello, Bob. Thanks for joining us on the program today. Great to be here, Guy. Bob, the Edge has been a widely discussed topic for quite some time now, but how does Intel see the Edge? And also, which Edge are you focused on specifically? So my focus, Guy, is on the Enterprise Edge. And uh, when we think about the Enterprise Edge, this uh, could be what lands uh, within the Enterprise-owned uh, facilities. It could be in their own buildings. It could be in their branch office. It could actually also be anywhere in the vicinity of the between the POP and the Enterprise itself. And so that is my particular focus uh, within Intel. So I'm focused on the enterprise and cloud side of networking. And, um, and, and I would say that uh, what is really interesting about this is that the edge has always been there, right? And we've historically have had an edge. It's just that the edge needs to change and is changing to address what is really required and uh, the new usage models today. How do you see the enterprise edge and its role in the context of the edge to cloud landscape? When I think about the enterprise edge, it uh, really starts off with what is the enterprise really trying to go do? And um, what kind of information do they want to process locally versus what do they want to go process elsewhere in some other cloud? And so one of the key things that we're seeing is this whole concept of a thin, medium, thick. And you want to make sure that you've got an architecture that can digest a thin kind of configuration if you don't really need to do too much on your enterprise or your enterprise edge to maybe a medium configuration or a thicker configuration based on what you're really trying to go do. And so depending on what your usage model is. You want to make sure that you've got this architecture and this solution that can address the usage models that you need and you have a way of doing it in a fashion that is scalable. Do you see SD-WAN as becoming more critical to enterprises? Definitely. Uh, definitely see SD-WAN as becoming uh, very critical to enterprises, especially as we've gone into this multi-cloud world. So um, what is really different is that as we've moved and evolved from having compute done only in a single location to now having compute done in multiple locations, software-defined WAN, SD-WAN has become really, really critical. And one of the things that we have found is that having the ability to have the option to address how you do SD-WAN as an example where it's done um, and the ability to have architectures that can address things from a thin kind of uh, solution with possibly an atom kind of processor an intel atom kind of processor to a medium to a thick that sort of evolves to the um, intel xeon d processors or our bigger xeon processors and having the ability from an architecture to be able to go address that and then addressing this in a fashion that either takes you know, um, more control over a single hardware platform versus having this as a software function in a bigger platform that one might have on that edge. Having this ability and this architecture that can address that, we think is really, really interesting and important. Now, um, when we sort of think about that um, and having this architecture address this, um, we think that um, uh, having our partners that are able to go and have these architectures seamlessly address what their customers want in this seamless fashion is what we've been really focused on. And so then it comes to 
Well, how do you then build on top of this uh, to make sure that you're addressing their needs irrespective of how and where these workloads are landing? What are the security implications of the Enterprise Edge? There sure is. So depending on what you're doing locally, and if you've got data that you're trying to process locally, especially if there's uh, either a latent aspect to it or not, you're going to need to address the security aspects on your premise. And so making sure that you've got, for example, the right security mechanisms built into your box or what you're doing on that edge um, is important. And so, for example, having a performant um, you know, firewall or virtual firewall in that case that's landing on that solution on your edge is going to be important. As you start going into other clouds, um, what you do with your security and your security strategy is going to change and possibly need to evolve. And so one of the major trends we're really seeing is around this whole security as a service kind of aspect where an enterprise is probably going to be considering um, offloading maybe that aspect to a company that will provide that as a service um, on top of whatever network configurations that you sort of have. And so we see this as another mechanism, especially um, as um, companies are going more into the cloud, you're going to need to have a mix of what you need to address your security concerns. What do you think are the key deployment considerations for the Enterprise Edge? So uh, when we think about the deployment options here, um, it's going to come to, you know, what are some of the usage models that you have? What kind of IoT environment do you have, if any? And then based on that, you're going to have uh, scenarios where you're going to have to make sure that you build in the right kind of configurations and uh, solutions in this whole thin, medium, thick kind of option. And so I think that um, making sure that uh, you can sort of address what you need and then you sort of come back to the architecture that needs to support you. And so the way that we sort of think about this is this sort of starts off with what we're calling the CPE. Uh, so this is in a way you can think about this as the hardware, the customer premise equipment, um, and then uh, what you build on top of that. Uh, so with the whole NFVI software layer, the software defined WAN that lands on top of that. Um, and then of course, um, you know, whatever security uh, mechanisms you need to be able to manage whatever environment you have either locally or in the cloud or at the mix to make sure that you've got the right way of managing that from an overall solution perspective. Can you explain more about the convergence of workloads? So with the convergence of workloads, um, so depending on what you're doing on that edge, um, not all traffic is equal, meaning that um, if you've got traffic that's coming in from your uh, IT side versus traffic that's coming in from how you're managing various IoT devices, how you manage that data, how you bring this in, how do you sort of think about that data, uh, knowing that, uh, that where that data originated from may have different security policies, may not necessarily have the same level of scrutiny and security built into that data. So those things need to be taken into consideration as you bring that information together. How you treat one versus the other may be different. You might need to sandbox certain information before you actually decide that it's secure enough for you to be able to go process it. And so based on that, you know, those mechanisms and then those uh, policies need to somehow be managed so you're, you're ultimately addressing the business needs, but you're doing this in a secure fashion based on what you're trying to go manage on your edge. How is Intel working with the industry and service provider partners to make this happen? Yeah, we're very, uh, very fortunate to have a very strong uh, set of uh, partners. And so we work with our partners in terms of providing them all the building blocks that they need to be successful. And this starts off with, you know, the processors, the um, other supporting silicon products that we have. It's the software building blocks that we have to really make the applications go better and faster, especially as it relates to 
packet processing and uh, doing compression decompression or doing encryption decryption. So we make sure that our uh, partners and our software partners have that. We work with the ISV ecosystem to make sure that their software is really optimized in the best fashion possible so it can run really well on that edge as well as running well in any other cloud environments they need to run in. And, and uh, ultimately, then uh, we just want to make sure that between the um, hardware ecosystem players and the software ecosystem players, there's really a symbiotic relationship to ultimately deliver to um, the customers, like the service providers, what they really need to address um, what is important for their business. We'll be seeing some of your partners in the Enterprise Edge V Summit. What will they be talking about in today's sessions? I'm really fortunate to have uh, three really great partners here. Uh, we have uh, BT, we have uh, CenturyLink, and we have Telefonica coming on. And I think that uh, just really having a listen to what they're uh, doing, uh, the kinds of um, problems that they're trying to solve for their customers, how they're working with Intel and our respective eco partners. I'm really excited to be um, partnering with them, uh, working with them, and um, they have a lot of interesting things to say. Bob, I know you'll be joining us later on one of the sessions, but for now, thank you very much for joining us today. And don't forget, you can watch additional interviews and discussions on the Enterprise Edge, as Bob just mentioned, as part of the Intel Network and Edge vSummit series. But for now, Thank you for watching and goodbye.